Hello and welcome. I am Gimba Umar. Tonight, hopes rises for the release of the University of Medigiri lecturers abducted by Boko Haram insurgents in Borno State. As Governor Shatima says, talks are on to ensure their freedom. Parties trade blame as controversy over non-payment of workers' salaries in Kogi State rages. Former President Olushago Basonjo decries effect of corruption in the future of the African child. Six synergy between the judiciary and security agencies to tackle the menace. And former leader of Catalonia vows to resist takeover by Spanish government through democratic opposition. On business news tonight, Nigeria's central securities clearing system changes platform in the capital market the first time in 20 years. On sports news tonight, Venus Williams becomes the oldest woman ever to reach the WTA 12 finals after beating Caroline Garcia 6-7, 6-2 and 6-3 to set up a title decider with Caroline Wozniacki. We begin tonight from Yobe State, where reports say that troops of the Nigerian army have engaged suspected members of the Boko Haram sect who launched an attack on Goneri community this evening. Our correspondent in the state gathered from a top military source that sporadic gunshots were heard in the community, which is in Gujba local government area. But some of the residents informed Channel's television that the military appeared to have repelled the attack. The suspected insurgents were said to have come to the town from the southern part around Sambisa, Talala and al Gannaru areas, which the military said have been cleared of insurgents. Meanwhile, troops of Operation Lafia Dole, in collaboration with some members of the Civilian Joint Task Force, have carried out clearance operations in several areas around Borno State, northeast of Nigeria. They were said to have recovered equipment suspected to be used by the militants in training new recruits. The Director, Army Public Relations, Brigadier General Saini Usman, says that the soldiers also rescued five persons at Boboshi and Dubula. And staying in the northeast, where the governor of Borno State has given assurance that the University of Medigree lecturers recently abducted by Boko Haram will soon regain their freedom. A team made up of some Unimate staff and the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation were ambushed recently while on an oil exploration mission in Borno State with some killed and others abducted. Since insurgents released a video of three of the abducted uh, persons pleading with the federal government to free them in July, nothing has been heard about them. But in an exclusive interview with Channels Television's political correspondent, Sheung Okimbaloi, Governor Shitima says that talks are on to free the Unimate staff. The governor also believes that much more can still be achieved in the exploration of oil and gas in the Lake Chad Basin. I am from Borno. I witnessed the flaring of gas in Gajigan about 20 years ago. In that particular well, what was found was largely gas and very little oil. And now gas has become the product of choice. Oil will become to Nigeria what coal is to Newcastle in the next 20 to 30 years. But gas will continue to be relevant in the foreseeable future. So I believe that even for the sake of national stability and complementarity, the issue of exploring oil and gas in the Lake Chad region should be pursued with bigger. The oil that Nigeria Republic exports is found in the Dipa region. Dipa is 18 kilometers from Damascus, sharing the same contiguous border, the same people, the same land, the same topography. Cameroon is extracting 200,000 barrels of oil per day, a strong throw from the Nigerian border. So you might not even rule out international permutations to our quest for oil in the lecture region. We suffered a setback with the killing of the NNPC officials recently, but I believe we will bounce back very soon. Some university lecturers were kidnapped and held, have been held hostage by the Boko Haram set. 
and there were demands. Are all hopes lost on the rescue of these men? No, I believe discussions are currently ongoing. I would rather not comment on these issues so as not to jeopardize the lives of those hostages. But I can assure you that discussions are ongoing uh, and very soon they will regain their freedom. For a few full interview with the governor of Borno State on the insurgency war in the northeast region, his views on 2019 presidential elections and a restructuring debate, watch Sunday politics at 8 p.m. right here on Channels Television. In Kogi State, some youths have protested against a purported plan by some members of the Senate to donate bags of rice to civil servants in the state. And this is already generating controversy and heating up the already tense political climate in Kogi. The protesters are accusing the senator representing Kogi West, Dino Milaye, of embarrassing them. But Senator Dino Milaye disagrees, insisting that he needed to call the attention of the federal government to the sufferings of the civil servants. Youths from all the 21 local government areas of Kogi State walking the streets of the state capital, Lokoja, with placards bearing inscriptions calling on the lawmaker representing Kogi West Senatorial District, Dino Malai, to stop what they call outright embarrassment of the state. Senator Malai had called the attention of his colleagues in the Senate to the plight of civil servants in his state, who he says have not been paid for about 11 months. As I speak to you, Mr. President, workers have been hold salaries between 16 and 21 months. Unfortunately, the Kogisa government reacted to the death of the man who committed suicide. And what did they say? Official statement by the state government was that the man is not owed 11 months salary, he was owed only 9 months salary. After making his points, the senator went on his knees, asking his colleagues to come to the aid of the people he represents in the National Assembly. But the emotions did not pull a strand of hair from these protesting youths. The people who are saying the government don't pay salary, they are political civil servants. You understand? And so 99% of them are ghost workers. The man in the eye of the storm disagrees with Senator Malai, insisting civil servants in the state are only owed two months' salary. The issue of salary, I maintain that we are owing August and September. There's no denying the fact that there are those who have been cleared but are yet to be paid. That figure is there. The governor seems convinced enough about the salary issue, but it was not only Senator Malaya that raised the matter in the National Assembly. Another lawmaker from Kogi State in the House of Representatives also expressed his worries. The House knows the various motions and resolutions of this extreme chamber on the non-payment of salaries of state and local government, especially civil servants in Cookie State. And the state government has refused and opposed any effort by any authority to investigate the payment or non-payment of staff salaries. The drama continues on the streets of Lokoja. Civil servants in the state have been on strike for several weeks with no plan of returning to work. The labor movement at the national level is also threatening a showdown. Comrades, we want to solemnly let you know that the strike is the only lifeline left for workers in Kogi State to negotiate their survival in the hands of this government. Perhaps the true picture of the story will become clearer when Governor Yahya Bello finally decides to publish the long-awaited details of how salaries are being paid in the state. Only then will it be clear if indeed it is a political game or otherwise. The politics now, Adamar State in particular, where there seems to be a crack in the All Progressives Congress, the APC. 
This is coming after a group in the state party denied endorsing particular candidates ahead of the 2019 presidential election. In their numbers, the supporters of the All Progressives Congress APC in Adamawa State are here to show their unflinching support for President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Muhammad Jibrila of Adamawa State, calling on them to contest in the 2019 elections. After the rally, the supporters, which includes serving and non-serving lawmakers, both at the national and state houses of assembly, former ministers and other political bigwigs in the state, all converged on the government house in Adamawa State to further deliberate on who to support ahead of the 2019 presidential election. After that meeting, the party members also met at the party secretariat and came up with a communique endorsing President Muhammad Buhari for a second term in office. In view of the success achieved so far by the federal government in the implementation of the manifesto of the party, a vote of confidence in the President, Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari and his government was proposed and unanimously passed and adopted. Another resolution was moved by members calling for the endorsement of President Muhammad Buhari for second term in office and was also moved, passed and adopted by the meeting. But this does not seem to have gone down well for the Atiku Abubakar supporters in the party. I was not part of the community. I was part of the committee. I, did, I was there when the meeting was being discussed. I was there when the chief of staff spoke. Spoke very well about their programs which they have done in the state. I, we were all happy with it. I supported it. And I told you that I still support my governor for his activities in the state. But to say that I have endorsed somebody for 2019 for presidency, is, I, did, I was not part of that community. That is all I'm saying. The die appears to have been cast in the choice of the Adama APC for the 2019 presidential election. It now remains to be seen how this will play out in the state in the weeks and months to come. Ahead of the November 18 governorship elections in Adama, in a number of states rather, Governor Willie Obiana has taken his re-election campaign beyond the southeast region, campaigning in Lagos State, southwest of Nigeria. His tour took him to two business districts in Lagos to solicit the support of a number of businessmen. He met with the Balugun Business Association at the trade fair complex, Ojo, as well as traders in the Alaba International Market, Ojo as well, where they extolled his achievements for the state. Okay, That's a nice one. This is the Secretariat of the Balugun Business Association at the trade fair complex, Ojo, Lagos State. It's where a large number of Anambra state indigents run their businesses away from home. The indigents are here to receive Governor Willie Obiano, who has decided to visit the traders to seek their support ahead of next month's governorship election. He proceeds to a meeting with a general assembly comprising Anambra traders from 58 markets in the district. The president of Balogun Business Association believes the governor has earned himself a second term. There is no indigenous in Anambra state that we say that we do not enjoy the leadership of Europe, especially on security. Because I know years back, you cannot come to Anambra state and relax in your home. You will be going to hotels. You cannot even put your generator because you don't want anybody to know that you are at home. But this is the inception of his office. You can come home comfortably and relax in your, in your uh, compound, even leaving the gate open. Governor Obiano reveals that his administration is set to commence the state's airport project, which he promised to complete in three years. One important thing I want us to know is that in Anambra State, we have a lot of activities going on, like wedding ceremonies, burials, church events, and others, even when other states were in recession. Anambra State didn't experience it because we generate over one billion naira monthly, and that has been stimulating the economic activities of the state, which is of great importance. Another reason Anambra did not go into recession 
question is because we pay salaries as and when due. At the end of the meeting, the traders in their numbers pass a vote of confidence on him and also endorse the governor for a second term in office. In part two, after the break, flood wrecks havoc in Araya community in Delta State. Please stay with us.